All right, guys, there has been a ton of chatter recently on social media talking about whether dry poured concrete is as good as your standard wet poured concrete. And today, we're gonna try to put them both to the test. We're gonna cut these suckers open, we'll talk about the quality of them on the inside, on the outside, look at their finish, then we're gonna put them in this 10 ton press and try to break them. We'll see which one breaks first and which one is actually better. So let's get started. Welcome to the Comar Project. All right, first things first, let's talk about these two slabs. I poured these 90 days ago, so they had plenty of time to set up and cure. They have been sitting outside just like my regular slabs that I poured for my air conditioners so that they can get the same amount of weathering as a standard slab would get outside. So we know that these two are definitely cured hmm. and we can cut them open. But first let's talk about the installation of them and see which one was easier because the dry pour is way easier to pour than a wet pour. You don't have to mix it. Um, it's much easier to screed it. You do get a bunch of rocks on top that you can either remove or you can push them down. But in my experience, the dry pour slab is way easier because you're not limited to a timeline. So with a wet pour concrete, you have to screed it and you have to finish it within a certain period of time or it's gonna start setting up on you. With a dry pour, it doesn't matter. You can put it down and you can mist it anytime you want. So with misting a dry pour, there's really no standard guideline put out by the manufacturer that will tell you you have to mist it every so often. Uh, this is a process that people just started doing outside of manufacturer recommendations. Obviously, all the manufacturers are gonna tell you to do a wet pour. I haven't seen a dry, a specific dry pour uh, concrete that is only designed for dry pours. After doing a bunch of research, I found out that people are misting it every 30 minutes to every hour uh, to start off with. So I kind of split that and I did it every 45 minutes. I set my timer and on the first day I got five mists on it. And you can tell that I think I overdid it on that first mist because it looks like sand. On the top here, on the dry port, it looks like sand, like you would see at the beach. It's very rough. Compared to the wet pour, the finish is smooth just like you get it every single time. I wasn't too worried about this because I was actually in a rush to get this one done. Uh, but the slab that I have outside, the wet pour is perfect. There's no difference in it than any other slab that I've ever poured. So if you do it right, you're always gonna get a nice finish with the wet pour. And obviously let's talk about the elephant in the room, the color of them. The wet pour concrete, you're always gonna get that nice gray. With the dry pour, it's brown. It looks like a sandy beach, not one of those nice beaches. Um, but if you are pouring for something like a chicken coop or an outhouse or you know a shed, this should not matter to you. I mean, if you wanna have a perfect slab, obviously go with the wet pour. But as far as color goes, in this example, we definitely got brown. All right, so that is the initial appearance that we're gonna get from both of these slabs. Now, let's take these forms off and see how the outside edge differs in both of them. All right, let's take a look at the wet pour. And just like I expected, it's cured all the way through. It's solid pretty much, with the exception of a few little tiny um, air voids that we got during the pour. But other than that, this, uh, this slab is pretty good. And on the back side, it's cured all the way through. It was sitting on plywood, so it was pulling moisture from there. So it should have cured completely all the way through. Now let's take a look at that dry pour because I'm really curious. All right, at first glance, the color difference obviously is way different than the dry pour. Again, I honestly, I expected that color to just be on the top and then fade down as it cures down a little bit lower, but I guess I was wrong. And to be honest with you, this finish seems much more solid than the wet pour. There are absolutely no voids in here, which is very surprising. But I guess if you think about it, it's powder all the way through and you're just moisting that powder. Here, you're actually, getting air gaps because you're mixing everything together. And sometimes it's not viscous enough to get into every single void. So 
with the powder, it's completely filled. I did tap the form to make sure I got it nice and compact before I started misting it. So to, to be honest with you, this finish on the outside here is a little bit better than the wet pour, which is surprising. Let's look at the bottom. And it seems the corners are falling off a little bit, but it seems like it's solid all the way through. It's solid on the bottom. There's no, there's no real voids in here, but it just seems like it's still wet a little bit. I don't know if it's the color that's messing with my head or what, but those are just the sharp edges. I'm just cracking off these. Ooh, I don't think you can do that with the wet pour. Yeah, you could definitely barely, you could barely do it with the wet pour. So what I'm doing, there's little lips on here and they're breaking off on the dry pour as if it's not cured all the way. Interesting. Ooh, it's falling apart. Wow, 90 days and it does not seem to be cured all the way. So I guess this transition from here down to where the darkness starts, that seems to be where this part did not cure all the way. I don't know how long it would take for this thing to fully cure. I mean, it, it is hard enough. You could totally walk on it. I've already put my air conditioners on top of this one, but obviously the wet pour is cured all the way through and it just feels more solid. It's not crumbling. The bottom of it is not crumbling the same as the dry pour. So well, let's cut these suckers open and see if that continues throughout the entire slab. All right, let's do this. I am so curious as to whether or not these have cured all the way through. I have my suspicions, uh, but we've got our wet pour and our dry pour and let's just cut into it and see what happens. All right, so we got our sample pieces that we just cut outside. We have our wet and we have our dry. They are six inches by six inches in dimension and they are three and a half inches thick. Now this is a 10 ton press and I got a couple of GoPros set up to make sure that we capture the pressure gauge when that pressure is released. Cause once that concrete cracks, that pressure should relieve. So, so we got a high frame rate set up on this one and let's just do it. Let's start with the wet. All right, so we're at eight pounds of pressure and I don't see anything cracking just yet. Let's go to 10. All right, that's as far as I can get it. And we are at almost nine pounds of pressure and still nothing is cracking. All right, let's release that. All right, let's remove this plate and see if the direct pressure on it from this will do anything to it. Let's try that. Where are we at now? Six pounds of pressure. Now, seven. That's as far as I can get it. All right. And again, it has not cracked yet. All right, so we are at eight tons of pressure onto this wet pour block and it still has not cracked. So that's good news. Now let's try the dry pour. All right, here we go. This is the one I was really wondering about. Oh, I see a crack happening already. All right, so we are at five tons of pressure and we can see cracks already happening. We got a little crack coming down here. And then also there's a crack 
that is right there that's opening up. You can see it cracking right there, coming down. All right, we'll try to get it up to seven tons of pressure. Where are we? All right, so we're at eight tons of pressure like before, and there are cracks everywhere showing up. All right, so we got some cracks here developing all the way down here. One there, and also on this side, there are a few cracks that are coming down here and down there. All right, so let's release this pressure. And take a look at this block. All right, so right off the bat, we got a couple of cracks that are running down here. One that's running across there. There's one hairline fracture that's coming down here. There's another one that's running back here. And this side's got a nice chip that's coming off of it. And honestly, I think that once we put it in here and get some direct pressure on it, this thing's going to crack. So let's break it. Oh, there it goes. Uh, that was not a lot. I want to say that somewhere around two pounds per square in inch. As soon as we put it in there, this thing ended up cracking. Wow. Whoa. And it's pretty much coming apart in my hands as I pull it out. Well, let's see. Let's take a look at it. All right. So we got a couple of pieces here. This one has a crack all the way through it, and there we go. It's just falling apart in my hands. So you can't really tell me that a dry pour is going to be just as strong as a wet pour. I mean, it is 90 days. It should have cured. A typical curing cycle is about 30 days for concrete, and it's, I mean, it's just falling apart. Um, but maybe... It cracked so hard because we put pressure on it, real pressure, about 8,000 pounds with those plates on. So we got another block here. We're just gonna put it on there just with the bearing and see what it does. Woo -hoo -hoo. There it goes. Too easy. Again, <laughs> it's just falling apart. There's, there's nothing to it. A dry pour concrete slab is not just as strong as a regular wet pour concrete slab. The evidence is right here. I'll be honest with you guys. I, I kind of suspected that it wasn't as strong as a regular wet pour, but I did not expect it to just be crumbling like this where it pretty much just solidified on the outside and the inside is as soft as, I guess, styrofoam because it is coming apart super easy. Maybe not styrofoam, but there's absolutely no way that I will ever be doing a dry pour for anything structural. It's gonna crack. I am worried about that pad that we have outside with that air conditioner sitting on top of it, but we'll see how it holds up over the years. So I do have a couple of extra test samples that I'm gonna let sit for about six months, maybe even a year. And then we might do this again to see if it ever does cure because 90 days, it should be cured. But who knows, maybe this is just the curing cycle for a dry pour concrete slab and I have no idea. So we might backtrack and do another video down the road. So hopefully you guys learned something from this. I definitely did. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. If you have done this before and maybe you did something differently, please let us know in the comments section below so that other people can kind of learn from this and I can as well. Now, if you are pouring a pad for something small that doesn't have a whole lot of weight and you wanna wait for that curing cycle to happen, don't know when it's going to be, maybe, but 
For me, I'm definitely not going to be doing any dry pours in the future. So thank you so much for joining me on this experience. Hopefully you guys got something out of this video and I'll see you guys on the next one.